This is the library. Um, it's the oldest building in the museum complex. It was built in 1883, and it was recently renovated, and it holds over 6,000 books and um, 10,000 slides. This is Layla Hamden, and she basically runs things over here in the library. Um, and she's going to tell us a little bit about the books. Most of it came from the Julius Bloom Library collection. Uh, Bill Geschner, who was an antique stealer, gave us a lot of our oldest books and folios. Um, Jack Hemingway from New Hampshire, who is one of our favorite donors, gave us these beautiful books right here. We have everything from how to make jewelry, any kind of uh, fabrication, welding, forging, um, product catalogs, even to the effects of radiation on all types of metal, you know, Soviet publications. We have a few books from Dresden, a really wide range of German folios from 1878 to 1922 from all over Germany. Um, they have some of the greatest drawings that anything that we have. We also have uh, a few very special books, um, Mark Twain from 1920, that uh, you know haven't been cleansed or you know rewritten, and uh, though it doesn't have anything to do with metal, um, it's very appropriate for being on the river. And we even have a really nice old copy of uh, some Shakespeare plays, you know. And it's a, some people say we should get rid of it, and some people say we should keep it. But um, one of our favorite blacksmiths told me that uh, his wife will have to have something to read when she comes to visit. So <laughs> we're hoping we can keep that too. But there's something for everybody, I think, in this library. These are some of our um, where we keep some of our folios. We have many of them. You know, we're still going through and uh, wrapping a lot of our. You know, smaller books. These are some of the German copies that we have. We'll have them scanned to where we never have to actually touch, touch the books. I think these are some of our folios. They all need a little help. You know, some of the strings are uh, coming off or the bindings are coming apart. But some of the most beautiful drawings that I've ever seen are in these. This one's from 1927. So uh, anywhere from the very late 1800s to the early 1900s. Inside, it's a huge piece of paper that if you open up, it will show you exactly how to make a lock and key mechanism from the 1700s, you know, to scale. Uh, all you have to do is follow the diagrams and it's kind of, it's, it's very exciting. Um, I think, and I don't just say this because we work here, that uh, this may be one of the most important libraries in the country. No one's in here. <laughs> but this is this is our gift shop. It's it's a little small, but it has it's packed, and it has some really unique gifts. Um, I think a lot of I've heard a lot of people say, "Oh, I go I go to the metal museum to buy wedding presents or very you know special gifts." We have. Um, Excellent jewelry. Um, actually, these sunflowers. This is McKinney Forge um, was where I used to work. Those are the, Charlie and Marion are the people who kind of set me up with this place. Um, these pieces by Stephen Kazilla, who um, is an intern here. And Bob Rogers is our like volunteer foundry man. He finds antique door knockers and match holders and casts them. He, he is a really great caster. His Holly Fisher, who does these, she always does our auction for repair days. Um, she is a character. <laughs> you have to, you have to come and to the repair days auction. It's fabulous. <laughs> Here are some pieces by Kevin Burge who works in the conservation lab. And they're really beautiful. Um, the show that opened up um, along with the Jamie Bennett show and our tributary show was the Art Cooker show. And we have a bunch of really, really fun pieces out here. Um, I just 
love this one. It's like a, a truck cut in half with the picnic bench. But all the, all the pieces um, during the opening, they had food cooking on the cookers and they were serving, you know, like gumbo and hot dogs. There was a great hot dog cooker out here. It's, <laughs> it was really fun. It's quirky, like the museum, but I really like this piece. They're all great, but this piece, the, just the monumental scale. Um, and I kind of heard how they put it together, like that, that blue part on the end kind of screws off and they stuck the rock on there. I just love that really beautiful patina that it has. And this piece over here to the, the chaos piece, um, I did a, I studied a little bit of African art in college and it just reminds me of these Nikisi pieces that people of the village would have this figure and they would, you know, um, drive nails and screws in it and to just, um, ward away evil spirits. So it just, that juxtaposition with that really clean shape and that chaos growing out of it, it's, I don't, it's kind of nice. I know Carissa's working really hard to get get a lot more money for this program so it can grow and expand and maybe right now we have four resident artists but maybe someday we could have a lot more in, in different areas. We have like six over 6,000 books in our library and it's like the largest collection of these type of books of its kind and a lot of people have started meeting in the library, um, different organizations, and many weddings. This is um, a really popular place to get married because we have the most beautiful view of the Mississippi River. We also have Foraging on the River, which is a conference we do here in the spring. It's um, usually in March. That's really great too because you get to see these masters demonstrating. You know, it's good to to go to these repair days and foraging on the river and the BAM conference. Blues on the Bluff um, was on the museum grounds. That was a really fabulous time. It's important to stay involved because like I said before, it's a community and that's, it's kind of important. <laughs> it is important, it's very important. <laughs>